Now, if Congress doesn't raise the debt ceiling on October 17th, just three days from now, the U.S.'s credibility as the world's safe haven would be jeopardized. And according to many experts, the impact on the global economy would, ca would be catastrophic. With for more on what this means for regular Americans, we are joined by Keith, Keith Fitzgerald. He's the chief investment strategist for Money Map Press. Keith, thank you for joining us tonight. Pleasure to be here. Now, we see from the markets uh, here in the U.S. today and uh, in Asia trading today, it looks like market participants think that there will be a deal made in Congress before that deadline on the 17th. What do you think the likelihood of that is? Well, it's hard to say an exact probability, but it's a good thing that the markets are taking this in stride because what that suggests is that we're not, in fact, facing a catastrophic meltdown. Now, personally, I think that Congress is just arrogant enough and there's just enough hubris that they're going to take it right Right to the very end. Okay, right to the very end. Do you think there's a possibility we might actually default? Unfortunately, I think there is a possibility we might actually default. Okay, so what percentage do you give it, Chance? Very, very small. Infinitesimal. 1%, 2%, okay. something in that order. So All this right. is not a you know, 90%. This is 1%. Very, very remote okay, possibility. Okay, small chance that it'll actually happen. But the last time we saw Congress uh, get into such a debate, they really brought it to the 11th hour. It caused a downgrade of the U.S. credit credit um, by the rating agencies. Is there a possibility that we might see a downgrade even if we do get to an agreement that just the, 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 the gridlock in Washington will cause the agencies to decide that, that you know, we should really be careful about investing in U.S. Treasuries? Well, sure. Unfortunately, there's not another alternative. The United States paper is the best looking horse in the glue factory, so the world's investors still need to have it. Okay, so, but having said that, if we do see a downgrade, uh, the last time we saw that happen, uh, I believe it was in 2011, we saw the S&P drop by about 17%. Mm -hmm. So knowing that, how should regular Americans who have investments in stocks uh, behave in the next three days? I mean, should they be doing some profit taking, given that there might be this risk of a downgrade? Well, I think the first thing that they want to do is keep their eye on what they should be doing, which is finding quality investments that are undervalued, no matter what the stock market looks like. Washington is a sideshow. It's a circus. It's an outrage. It's abomination. It's everything that's wrong with the democracy right now. However, if there is a pullback and there's value that goes on sale, don't forget that there are many companies whose business models are not affected by this. Companies in energy, companies in technology, companies that are doing things with consumers worldwide, they're still going to grow no matter what happens in Washington. Okay, I don't necessarily want to play a what-if game if we actually right. do go over because I don't want to scare everybody unnecessarily because we think the odds are pretty slim that we'll actually default. Yep. But if we do see a downgrade, that is a possibility. Yep. Uh, would that affect uh, the interest rates on the 10-year Treasury? Sure. I mean, interest rates are logically going to go up because if you get a downgrade, then somebody's going to have to make that debt more attractive to their buyer, which right. means rates are going to go up. And either Treasury is going to raise them or, or the Fed's going to raise them or whoever's doing the auction, traders may force that hand. We don't know what that looks like yet. We're truly in uncharted territory. But again, for individuals, yep. they don't have to panic. This is not the time to panic. You want to begin taking money off the table. You want to begin catching your gains, looking at what you've gotten, rebalancing your portfolio if you had that opportunity. Okay, but, but if we do see the 10-year rate increase, that would mean mortgage rates would increase as would mm -hmm. credit card rates. So what should people who have credit card debt or who have mortgages right now, is there anything they can do to lessen the impact if, in fact, we do see rates tick up? Absolutely. Within, you know, 72 hours is not a lot of time to act, but, you know, if they have the ability to pay off debt, go ahead and do that. If they have the ability to convert from an adjustable rate mortgage to a fixed rate mortgage, that's probably a good idea. If they have the ability to call in loans, those are all things that they can do within 72 hours. Okay. And also there's talk about that this, this sort of ruins the credibility of the U.S. in terms of being the reserve currency. Uh, do you agree that the damage has already been done to that reputation? And if we do see that the U.S. is not the safe haven place anymore, where else could investors go to park their money in a place that is seen as relatively safe? Well, you know, that's interesting because that assumes the United States still has international credibility left. And a lot of people <laughs> in the world don't think that that's okay, the case. Fair, uh, fair enough. You know, which is, which is a tough statement for me as an American to make. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's an embarrassment to have to explain to foreigners what's going on in our country sometimes. Mm -hmm. But that having been said, you know, the Swiss franc is attractive, especially the Chinese yuan is attractive because it's backed in part by assets. It's backed by an economy that's got $3.2 trillion in reserves. It's backed by real growth. Whether that growth is slowing or not, it's still triple the growth we're experiencing in the first world. Mm -hmm. Europe. Uh, there are very few places you can invest there. So you want to go to where money's treated the best. And you think China is, is one of the options and that, that we could see money being flooded there in terms of the currency? Absolutely. It's already the fourth most liquid traded currency in the world, and it's not even unblocked yet. 2015, it becomes unblocked. Okay. So we've got a couple of days before we're going to get a final decision on this. What do you think hinges upon them coming to an agreement? They have to act like adults. 
somebody has to get all the toys out of the sandbox, send them to bed without dinner, and they have to figure out what they actually have to do for the American people. People are trying to split this and say, this is a Democratic issue, this is a Republican issue, this is a presidential issue. No, they're all with their hands dirty now. This is an American issue. America is suffering from political and financial fatigue. The majority of American citizens, the majority of people in the world, simply want them to do their jobs and actually get on with our lives, because they forget that we elected them. That's right. Okay, act like adults. That's the advice. Thank you so much, Keith. That was Keith Fitzgerald, Chief Investment Strategist for Money Map Press.